from my previous video tutorial, we derived this, that basically the time it takes for a projectile to get to the top of its motion is equal to the initial velocity in the y direction divided by 9.8. And that 9.8 is just acceleration. So if you happen to get a problem um, where you're using the US system instead of SI, just make sure that you switch that to 32.2, because that would be feet per second squared. Um, so going from there, and the other equations that we basically know, just if we're given a projectile with an initial velocity that takes off its um, angle with the horizontal, we know that we can find both the initial velocity in the y direction and the initial vo velocity in the x direction by using trigonometry. Um, and we also know that basically every single projectile that we have, once it's been launched, the only acceleration that it has is acceleration due to gravity because when we have the projectile in air, the only force acting on it is just that weight. Um, so because of that, we know that even though our velocity in the y is going to be changing, because we're going to have vfy, so at any given point, it's just going to be equal to viy plus at. And because we have some acceleration in the y direction, um, this EY is always going to be changing. However, if you write that same equation in the x direction, so VIX plus AT, we don't have any forces that would cause an acceleration in the x direction, and therefore we have no acceleration in the x direction, and our VFX is going to be equal to our initial velocity in the x direction, and therefore we can just say that we have one Vx, and because of that, we know that this equation will also hold true when we're looking at projectiles that are going in two dimensions. Um, so that's just sort of a basic what's going on there. I'm going to erase all of this so that we can start looking at how we can use the equations that we know to be true to get to more advanced equations that are really going to help us solve these sorts of problems very quickly. So, um, basically, we're going to use these to solve one type of problem where, and we'll have this pretty often, where you start, you're launched at some angle, and then it comes right back down to the same ground. So say we have um, a football player kicking a football. We just have some sort of motion where it's coming back to the same level. Um, and so in that case, we know that actually this initial velocity in the y direction and the final velocity in the y direction are going to be the same, but just in opposite directions. So if we call the um, up direction positive y, then we're going to have viy here and our vfy is going to be equal to negative VI. Um, so that's just sort of a good thing to remember. It doesn't actually play into the equation that we're going to use here, but that's definitely something that physics teachers like to ask um, on tests. So really for this one, the important thing that we know, um, and we can kind of tell this from here, is that we're going to have the exact same motion going up as we do coming down, but it's just going to be sort of done oppositely. Um, so because we know that the time that it takes for this projectile to get to the top is given by this equation, then we know that it's going to take the exact same amount of time to get back down to here. So that means our time total is going to be equal to twice times our time to get to the top, which is basically going to give us 2 times viy over 9.8.
So taking that and then the fact that in this sort of problem, obviously the teacher isn't going to be asking you about how far it goes in the y direction, even though we have an equation for that that we also derived. Um, but most likely they're going to be asking you how far that football went down the field um, or just how far that projectile went in the x direction. So that means that really what we want is right here. And because we had an initial velocity given here, most likely you just had an initial velocity and an angle that that projectile was shot up at. Um, we already knew Vx because Vx is just given right here, which is Vi cosine theta. Um, so what we needed to get that Dx, which is what we're looking for, how far the projectile went in the x direction, what we needed was the time that it took to get all the way across here. And now we have that. So basically what we ha have now is that Dx is equal to Vx, which we can just go ahead and plug in Vi cosine theta. And then our time, which is going to be 2 times Viy, which I'm just going to go ahead and plug in from here too, Vi sine and that's over 90. Um, so then just simplifying, we get that the displacement in the x direction is equal to the initial velocity times cosine So then knowing this equation, it's really simple to just plug in the two things that we were given, which were the initial velocity and the angle that it was shot up at, and get our displacement in the x direction. And I really recommend just going through these steps to get your equation instead of plugging in to multiple different equations because you're going to have a lot less numerical errors here. And um, I don't know about you guys, but for me, calculator errors tend to be um, one of the biggest problems. So to minimize the number of things that you're plugging into the calculator can really help you.